and they'd actually take me out of school for these shop hops when they'd have like the special events and I'd get like a fat quarter at least a fat quarter from every single shop that were that was always yellow <laughs> and uh, that was like a treasured memory from when I was a kid uh, from my mom and her friends and sometimes my grandma would come too it was it was really fun Uh, probably for as long as I remember. Um, I probably finished my first quilt maybe around five, but I remember quilting with my mom and my mom's friends and my grandma for as long as I remember. It's probably as long as I could reach the pedal. <laughs> That's your quilt. Mm -hmm. You made that. Yes. How long did that take you? Um, it took me probably about a year. Uh, but it was during 2020, so I did a lot of it during when I was working from home okay. at my parents' house because I moved back to my parents' house during 2020 when I was working from home for like three months. Uh, so I did a lot of it. I'd work from home um, during the day, and then at night I'd just quilt with my mom, and she'd help with me with it. So I did the majority of it during that time. So it probably was a... Uh, quickly done during that time. If I didn't do it during that time, it would have taken me a lot longer because there's like a hundred something blocks in it. So it's queen size, a little bit bigger than queen size to fit on my bed, so it's gigantic. <laughs> I uh, wanted to do rainbow batiks on one side and then yellow on the other because I really love yellow <laughs> and so I wanted it to match all the decor in my house so I'd mostly picked yellows and then rainbow to contradict all the other and so it's kind of like in a diamond uh, when it's all spread out it's log cabin like the Civil War family heirloom uh, but definitely different colors to pick uh, my uh, match my decor um, so that's how I picked those colors but it's all batiks because I love batik fabric Um, finished, I've started quite a few, but finished, I've, I've finished one. Um, it was a baby quilt for one of my friends that had a baby. Yeah, I made a little, um, it was a scrappy heart uh, paper piece quilt that had Minky on the back for her that she had a baby recently. I finished that one. Mm, I can't re exactly remember, maybe a year, but it was a special circumstance since it was 2020. Because you were kind of going through it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was a busy year. For the uh, baby quilt, it was probably also a year, but I was really pushing myself because she told me that she was pregnant, and then I didn't give it to her until the baby was post being born. So at least she still fit on the quilt. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually going to do another log cabin, kind of like this one, but it's just going to be yellow and white batiks. So um, I have two uh, quilts that are for my bed that I can alternate because I made this fish, finished this one in 2020 and basically been using it on my bed ever since, and it's already starting to get like a little worn. There's I, there's a few places on it that I've had to fix because I've used it for four years every single day. So I'm like, I need to make another quilt to put in the rotation so I don't like wear it out before it. I'm done with it, so. I actually have a bunch of antique uh, suitcases in my house, like stacked up in my quilt room where I store all of my fabrics. So it's kind of like decor, but also storage that I've picked up in antiques um, stores around my neighborhood or I've gotten from family members and cleaned up and then I store my fabric in that. That's a great idea. Yeah. And that's a fun decor. Mm -hmm. So it's like all along the walls I just have a bunch of like antique suitcases that I have all my fabric and my notions and my tools and stuff like that. I really like to choose the fabric because I really like I, I'm a graphic designer and I really like choosing colors and matching colors so I 
I really like doing that, but also sometimes I get hung up in that process after I get the fabric. I like choosing the colors, but sometimes matching them up is a process because sometimes I get too decisive and I'm like, oh, maybe I'll pick this one. Oh, maybe actually I want to pick this one. So like with this quilt, I decided to go scrappy. So I just, I'm like, okay, now it's just, I'm not going to be too decisive. I'll just throw it all in the table and be like, okay, it's this one, it's this one. And not be too decisive, not let myself too get in the weeds with it, so. I love the piecing part. Um, especially if it's paper piecing. I've, I definitely recently found paper piecing is my favorite because then you don't actually have to sit down and measure and cut all the pieces. So I really love paper piecing, but actually sitting at the machine doing the sewing part is my favorite part of quilting. Yeah, and picking out the colors of the fabric and buying the fabric. <laughs> that is also my favorite part. No, it was definitely a joint effort. I definitely remember uh, working with my mom and my grandma and my mom's friends who were basically like family too. Uh, we'd go on shop hops uh, with my mom and her friends. That was definitely a, a treasured memory with uh, my mom. And they'd actually take me out of school for these shop hops when they'd have like the special events and we would uh, go to like the different quilt shops in the area and they'd have like sales and like little charms I actually have like a necklace that has like the little charms from the different shops that they'd give you during like those shop hop sales days that my mom made me um, And I would get like a fat quarter at least a fat quarter from every single shop that were that was always yellow <laughs> and uh, That was like a treasured memory from when I was a kid uh, from my mom and her friends and sometimes my grandma would come too. It was it was really fun So it's always been a part of my childhood and growing up and as an adult too And I actually like even last year we all like my grandma and my aunt and my mom We all like took a day off from work and our lives and got um, a, a hotel room just in Kansas City and just all took our sewing stuff and worked on our projects together and my mom even brought like a project for all us to do and she like taught a little class for us to make like a little paper piece, piece uh, Christmas tree so um, not like that they were raised quilters but I actually made a friend last year that her grandma had passed away and left her her sewing machine and she didn't know how to quilt and so she brought her sewing machine her singer sewing machine to my house because I also had a singer sewing machine that was from 1950 and so we got it working again my dad helped us like got it working again because he works on antique sewing machines for my mom and I taught her how to use it and taught her how to paper piece because she didn't know how to quilt. And so she got interested in quilting through me and my family, so. Finding time to do it in the daily lives, but I think it's, it's a good relaxing thing to do when you're stressed with your work or you know, just everyday stress. It's a good time to like take a moment to yourself and listen to a podcast or watch a show while you're like sewing so finding time to do it but it's good to like make your make time to do it family tradition it's really important to keep that alive and just for myself uh, finding a creative outlet and being able to get something from that creative outlet that you can use in your daily life that keeps you warm and that you get joy from I'm Jenny Lifland and this is why I quilt